tillage yoga. Good morning and thanks for clicking your way back to the good old Southern IA here guys. Phone rang at six o'clock this morning. Wayne was on the other end of it. Says, hey, it's gonna be a beautiful day. Are you gonna get up and get anything done? Uh, we do have the opportunity to get some stuff done again here today and I'm probably gonna be planting corn. However, in the last few videos, you've heard me say the no-till anhydrous bar. We have two anhydrous bars running here for us to get all our smoke pulled on. This is the no-till anhydrous bar. The difference in between the other bar and this bar is, is the other bar uses the shanks and then two discs to close it behind it. It's kind of rudimentary and basic and works good, but it disturbs a lot of soil. This one right here is called the John Deere 2510H. Uh, I'm actually kind of impressed by these machines and I really do, I'm, I'm interested in them, I guess you could say. But what I like about these bars is that it uses hydraulic pressure to keep it into the ground. So it pushes the whole units down into the ground and then they raise up out of the ground when you don't want them in there. It uses a big cutting blade right here on a slight angle to trench into the ground with a depth gauge style wheel. It then has a little shoe boot right here on the edge of it to create a little bit of a gap with this zipper style wedge here on the back end of it. It injects the anhydrous into the ground and then uses these two kind of closing wheel style deals to firm up the trench. Pretty sweet rig right there. They can get a lot of acres done in a day, but it takes a lot of horsepower to pull them because they are pulling them at about 10 miles an hour through the dirt. This is a, yeah, is it supposed to have a chuck or something on it? Well, it's got a bolt and a, and a washer. You would have had to whack something hard. Boy, yeah, I whacked that uh, copper. Well, let's start out here first thing this morning. For you that don't know, my name is Ben Van Rokel. I run this Iowan Farmer YouTube channel where it focuses around things that I do as a 28 year old second generation farmer on a family farm. However, first thing this morning, I do need to take care of some stuff from my LLC. I have a small farm service company where I sell seed and sell egg leader stuff. And I also will do some custom work. I had a neighbor call me saying he needed to get some ground tilled. So I'm going to go take care of that really fast. It's only 10 acres. So it'll take about half an hour. Then I'm probably going to hop back across the road. Maybe do a little bit where the dozer has been uh, on my farm where the bean plot is going. And then my buddy Austin, he's going to be coming into work today. He's the one that helped me when we were doing the terrace and tile projects over there on my farm. And he's going to help me get ready to plant some corn because today we are planting corn. Don't roll in that dirt. Oh, yeah. And for you that don't know, we've been doing a planting vlog day lately uh, where I just kind of take you guys along with us uh, during this really busy season of the year where we're trying to get our crop in the ground so we can harvest one this fall. And in honorary of doing so, we're the first video to reach 2,000 likes, I'm going to give away a hat. And then also we're about to break 24,000 subscribers, which at 25,000 subscribers, we're going to be giving a hat away as well. This is my dog, Bandit. He's a blue healer, uh, toad. And this is what he does before we try and get into a tractor. So don't get the impression that he doesn't like riding in tractors. He really likes riding in tractors. He just doesn't like getting into the tractors. And I've also told him that uh, for every single like we get for the videos, they equate the good old back scratches for him, which he needs because now he's covered in dust. Gotcha. We got the 9400 fired up. I'm going to fold it up here in a second, take it down the road to the neighbors. And when I say to the neighbors, I mean to the neighbors, it really won't take me very long to do this, uh, which is a good thing because I completely forgot my coffee at, ha at the house along with my lunchbox. But we have to go back there anyways today because I have some seed in my basement I need to get out. So once Austin shows up, we're going to head back there, pull the seed out, and then we'll be fully engulfed into planting some corn. Tillage yoga. I 
think you guys are truly going to enjoy the video here today. Uh, we're going to have that 24 corn row planter fired up, putting some acres in the ground. The farm that I'm actually going to be planting is this one right here. Uh, I think it's a shy 120 acres, but I got a 20 acre plot that I put in. So we're not going to be putting that plot in today. So that means I just got 100 acres to do. Not a big day for that planter whatsoever, but that's the ground that we have ready to go. So that's what's going to go. That's fantastic. Look at this, boys and girls. It broke the depth gauge wheel completely. This is exactly what I want to deal with at 7 o'clock in the morning. Oop, oop. Oop. Well, I don't have my phone, but it might be time to call my dad uh, with the first problem of the day. It's 8 o'clock, so that's not too early, I don't think. So I know I have some younger guys that watch my videos. And they've reached out to me about exploring careers in agriculture or getting hired on with a farm and one thing that might be a tip for those guys what i'm about to do i'm going to call my dad and tell him that a piece of equipment's broken i do this all the time it doesn't bother me i could definitely see how someone would be nervous to call their boss and say hey uh the piece of equipment that you trust me with is broken it's not working uh, because they might get mad or something like that that doesn't really happen most farmers know that uh things break and that's just the way it goes and if you're not doing something malice they're they're not going to get angry or anything like that but there's a value add here that i'm going to maybe say is a, a tip and it can showcase maybe a skill that you're trying to develop as in like problem solving when i talk to him here in a second i'm going to be you know i thought about it I'm gonna suggest what I think might be wrong and what we could fix. So I'm starting to think that maybe the cylinder stop that that where it hits that clamp might be going bad and it's actually you just ramming it forward and it might not be the bolt issue at all. So that might be a bigger problem than we were just shearing bolts. So the bolts were just the underlying, you know, a little cause that we could, should have told us something, but we didn't think about it. Which means one of two things now either this thing is broken or i guess three things either this thing's broken and not going to be moving today that's not an option other thing that you can do is just what i just did is that i feathered the hydraulics to the depth that i felt was good where it was working nice pulling nice and i just used my senses to lay up the dirt you might think well we'll just go get another part uh, I don't know where the nearest Landol dealer is actually and the chances of them having that piece of equipment in or that part in today basically zero so the other solution that I've thought of is just cylinder stops we could just try and put some cylinder stops in there and see if we can control the depth on it that way uh, we would probably have to round up every single cylinder stop we have in our possession to do that but that might be the situation that we can use to keep that thing in the dirt and keep laying it up. Apparently I left my phone at the house too. But now I need to go find a cell phone. But that starts the problem solving process there so that when you make the phone call saying this piece of equipment's broke, you're not just like shoving that on top of your employer's long list of things that they're thinking about and trying to get done. And uh, they might start shifting a little more responsibility your way. So after a little sweat of moving some seed around, Austin showed up for work. He's putting some uh, fuel into this 9400. Kind of come up with a plan to test on this uh, depth gauge control. I'm gonna fire up the tractor, gonna put a clamp on it. So what it has here is this little solenoid and I'm thinking if I push this in with like a vice grip and close it, it shouldn't allow it to go down. And if it goes down, that means that this valve body is probably bad. And then the other thing that I'll probably do is take that assembly off of there and go weld it up real quick so maybe it's at least fixed to go for the day. 
gotta have a way to kind of hold that piece in without like sitting here and holding that piece in, you know? I'm pushing, see this here? Yeah. That comes against this bow, this button basically. And that button tells this manifold, hey, bypass lowering any further. And that's how you set your depth. So the depth of it? Depth of it. And I'm wondering if, which doesn't make sense to me, but I'm wondering if this isn't telling it to stop and then it's just putting so much pressure on the backpack there. So I'm gonna try and farm or fix this real quick here. Do it about like that. That'll give us a good, good weld to hold onto it. So I didn't forget it. Not pretty, but that should get it back and going because uh, Molly's actually running to go get a solenoid for us. You'll get anything you get from them is gonna be better than anything. I can. As soon as Bugs Bunny over here gets done honking on this carrot he's chewing on here, it's time for me to give away a sticker. If you guys didn't know that we've been giving away a sticker in every single video, uh, all you've got to do is comment on the video, and then I choose a good comment within the first 24 hours. Of that video being posted it is planting day vlog six planting in the mud when we we're trying to get some more soybeans put in the ground this one goes to wx jeremy i thought it was pretty funny when i read you don't do morgan freeman you be morgan freeman thank you guys for the comments send me an email jeremy and i will send you a sticker and uh we'll give away one tomorrow after being on a spring ride seat for the past like four days. for the goofy angle here guys but it's got what i got to work with what we got here is the ag leader in command 1200 it's gonna be it's the corn plant and tractor monitor it's awesome but there might be i gotta put an update on this one and then i've got to make sure i can get my prescriptions loaded into it and we should be ready to go and then most likely what i'll end up doing is that i am going to uh Yes. Yes. all those codes were is is that it senses that it's hooked up to the planter via the modules and everything else on it so it knew that the back pressure was low it knew that uh, all that stuff was low and the reason it knows it's low is because it's not even on so that's why so it's just telling us all that good stuff my GPS will start to kick up in here but anyways we're going to click on this 
data transfer, um, upgrade firmware, and command 5.0. It'll upgrade anything on here for firmware. This is really simple to do. All you need is a USB stick. You can go to Ag Leader, search uh, in command updates if you need to update something. You download it, you put it onto the USB drive, and it's these three clicks, and you're good to go. Good to go. Now this is where I put my product name in here so it keeps track of the hybrids that I'm planting. This is 59A20, it's a new hybrid for Champion this year. And I can split planter with this planter, so I got channel one and channel two. So I have to actually put, uh, I'm gonna fill both hoppers with the same hybrid. I can split planter and I will split planter later in the year. Different hybrids and different sides of the planter. So that's why I have to put the pop products in there twice. Here we go. Now it says, look at this, you're ready to go planting, but not yet because I have to input my prescription that I've got here. Which there's my prescription. Got it. I have a prescription. You can kind of see what the prescription looks like. I'm going to be planting more plants per acre on the better soils, uh, kind of an average on our average soils and on our weaker soils that can't support as many plants. I will be putting less plants out there. This is a good way to move seeds from one area of your ground to the other area of your ground to ground that can support more population than less population. And last year I saw a yield increase with the same amount of seed by doing this in a side-by-side -side trial. So that's good. That's good. So that was the basics of what I was doing just to get, you know, this monitor ready to go, put the prescription in, get my products getting ready to monitor. Uh, there's a few things that we're going to need to do before we can get this planter ready to go. They are greasing every fitting that they can find right now uh, because this is the first time we've had it unfolded. I need to zip tie some hoses together. I need to test fire the hydraulic drives by trying to prime the meters. Uh, I need to make sure that the back system is working by just turning it on. I need to make sure the ASD delivery system is working just by turning it on. I want to get my down pressure. This has pneumatic down pressure, which means airbags. I want to try and get that set kind of where I think it should be. I'm going to go through the calibration on the OnTrack 3 real quick. It hasn't been used in a little while, so I'm going to take it up there on the flat, reset my zero cal on it, go through it, set up wizard really quick. That takes no time at all. And then we should be ready to put some ground, uh, seed into the ground. Plant 2020 corn coming at you. That's dusty. So we got 18,025 pounds worth of seed in that box. Then I want to divide this evenly. 18,000. 25 divided by 2. 912 pounds basically in each side. That ain't bad. We'll load up this next box, that'll be pretty easy, same thing as that one. And then I'm gonna go to the steer, do the steering calibration, the zero tail calibration. And then I think we're planting. The gal that's keeping our bacon shaking today is back from the morning with our parts. We gotta get this land all up and going. It was like a 7 8 or something. You need a 15 16 or a 7 8? Uh, a 7 8, I think. Putting the end rows in here now. Uh, we're on some pretty gnarly ground. This is a back hill. There's lots of contour to it. We have uh, tree lines on some sides. We've got terraces in here. So uh, there's a, a lot of obstacles that we have to move around. But we got the land all fixed up. Andrew is headed to go start tilling on a field. Uh, thanks to Molly going to get us that part today. That's what kept us up and running. Sounds like my dad is pulling on smoke in the 8630. Uh, according to Andrew, he had a little bit of an issue there. You know, yesterday you saw me jump start that tractor to get it going. Uh, dad actually found out that one of the batteries was basically open or a bad battery. 
So he changed the battery and now he's up and pulling. It sounds like the no-till anhydrous bar is pulling too. Uh, according to the phone call I just got from Molly, they were having some type of issue with their bar as well. So, lots of things going on here in a little bit. We'll get you guys some cool shots of the uh, planter in action. pretty much what we're going to end up here doing today. Uh, Austin was a lot of help here. He, he, I think he had uh, this one. Did you find this interesting? Yeah. Yeah, I learned a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's different, isn't it? Yeah. So, we're going to fold this thing up. I'm going to actually take it down the road to the next field that we will be in tomorrow. And uh, then we're going to call it quits. Thanks again for hanging out with us again today, guys, down here in Southern Iowa. And we'll see you tomorrow. Austin doesn't want to bet with me. I got a lot of Austin's money on my fridge. $3. Huh? $3. Gotta play the curve here, boy. Oh, you got maybe $3 in this. No, that, that needs odds. You need odds. You make it? I make it five bucks if I miss one dollar to you. Three dollars. No. You gotta split it. That's my one. Now what's make it? If I make, if I like, if it goes in there and bounces out, that counts. <laughs> I know that's how you play basketball, but that's not a point. <laughs> no, that that counts. No, it's got to go in and bounce out. It can't hit this and bounce out. Once it, it's like soccer. Once it breaks the goal, the line, it's right. it's good. Okay. So what's the bet? If I make it, I get five bucks. If you, if I miss, you get two. Two. I can't get the goal line. You gotta do three. Three. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs>